Data Flow Diagram, DFD, Level 0. A Level 0 Data Flow Diagram is used to give an overview of an entire system. This type of diagram is also known as a context diagram. In a level zero DFD, there is only one circle or process that represents the entire system that we're looking at the context of. The purpose of this diagram is to display the expected inputs and outputs related to a system stemming from its various external entities. So what we're going to take a look at now is the different symbols that we use in a level zero data flow diagram. So firstly, we have an external entity. And this is any element that inputs data into a system and or retrieves information back from the system. Secondly, we have a circle and this represents a process. And this is when an action takes place on data turning into information. At this level of data flow diagrams, this level zero level, there is only ever one circle in the actual diagram and it represents the entire system. So usually that's where the name of the system is and we have various external entities around it showing how they interact with the system. Now, how do we know how, what's interacting with the system and what's happening? Well, we use flow lines. Flow lines are lines going in and out of the system showing the movement of data. And essentially it's showing at this level what an external entity puts into a system and then an arrow usually coming out of the system to the external entity or to another external entity as information for their use. Okay, so these lines are often accompanied by text reflecting the data going into the system or out of the system to and from external entities. So let's now look at some of the principles related to a level zero DFD. Now, firstly, what we have is they are used to represent the context of a system and hence why they're called context diagrams. They give us an overview of the system's context and purpose in a simple format. Secondly, the main processes or function of the system are represented as the single process. We only have one circle and usually we name that circle something related to the system's purpose followed by system. So if it's about a video streaming service, I might call it video streaming system. And that's the, what's written on my circle, highlighting its purpose and what my system is likely going to be called. Thirdly, external entities are interacting with the system and they are depicted around the system's boundary. So hence they are outside the circle, okay, that represents the system. And external entities can represent a variety of things such as people, data sources or other systems, okay, where data can be going to or coming from, okay, or processed into information and sent back to, okay, they are the actual sources that we are translating this data into information for. All right, so they can come in those different formats. And then finally, data flows between the external entities and the system, identifying data that is entering into the system from the external entities and information that is coming out of the system back to either the same or different external entities based on the system's purpose. Okay, and so all interactions between the external entities are happening through the actual systems process. Okay, so arrows don't go between external entities. They all go into in and out of the circle that represents the system. And then that obviously changes the data and then it's sent via the process to another external entity or to the same external entity. So let's have an overview of what the diagram's logic could look like. So as said, we often start off with the system itself. We only have one circle and that is represented by this one circle here on screen. So that is my system, okay? And I'm using my process symbol for that. So what happens here is I have an external entity. This external entity, it could be representing a user. They enter in data into the system and then in return, information is given back to them from the system. Okay, and so this is a basic interaction here and could be an entire data, data flow diagram at level zero for a given situation, showing a very basic context. But as said, we can have multiple external entities in these diagrams as well. So it could be this data that was entered in by external entity one can also be viewed as information by another external entity who will retrieve that information but then use it for their own purpose. And they might have a completely different role or interaction with the system themselves. And then they may put in their own data that is processed in a different way by the system, which could also be viewed by external entity one. As said with these arrows, they illustrate with text 
okay, what the data is. And in many cases, what's going into the system from these external entities is data. And what's coming out of the system back to those external entities is information, because we're hoping that the system has processed it into something meaningful for these different external entities. So I hope this video is giving you an understanding of how a level zero data flow diagram works, essentially giving us an, a very basic and simplified understanding of the context of what a system is meant to be doing, showing data flows in and out of the system. From this point, then we move into a level one data flow diagram, which then will break up our single process of system that is in the middle of our diagram into its sub processes, having multiple circles there. But obviously that's for a future video. So I hope this has helped you understand at least the level zero level of a DFD.